The fourth generation Mercedes A-Class offers an even stronger proposition to buyers in the premium compact hatch segment. If you define luxury in terms of technology, you're going to like it a lot. This fourth generation A-Class builds on the sporty handing legacy of its predecessor. Uh, we don't think the direct steer steering system is quite as fearsome as it was before, but it still enables you to place this car where you'd want through the curves and to really enjoy this Mercedes if you're a keen driver. Body roll is kept well in check and you're favoured with prodigious grip, which is impressively untroubled by mid-corner bumps. Thanks partly to this model's slightly longer, slightly more sophisticated MFA2 platform, ride quality is a match for the premium segment competition, but it could be better. And it would have been had Mercedes not decided to equip all the mainstream variants with low-cost torsion beam rear suspension rather than a more sophisticated multi-link setup. As for engines, well, the popular versions get engines developed by Mercedes in conjunction with its uh, European alliance partner Renault. As before, there's a 116 horsepower 1.5 litre diesel for the popular A180D derivative or a couple of 1.3 litre petrol units, either the 136 HP engine fitted to base A180 or the variant we've decided to try today, the 163 horsepower A200, which features cylinder deactivation technology and that's enough to help this particular A-Class deliver reasonable efficiency figures, 47.1 mpg on the combined cycle and 136 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's with a manual gearbox, but it's the 7G DCT automatic that most buyers will probably choose. Now you have to have that self shifter if you go for the rapid petrol 2 litre A250 model, which offers up 224 HP and almost hot hatch performance. In analysing the styling, let's start in profile so we can see the way that this model is visually extended by its longer wheelbase and by this sharp character line that runs from uh, nose to tail just below the glass house. Now the wing mirror is now mounted midway along it rather than being integrated into the windscreen pillar and the bonnet slopes down more heavily than it did with the previous car and that emphasises what Mercedes hopes is a more dynamic upright front end. The real story here though is what lies within. And sure enough, it'll be like nothing you've ever previously sat in when it comes to a car of this class. The key change being the lack of the kind of cowled instrument binnacle that almost every other car on the market has to have. Instead, two elongated square colour TFT screens are provided, one for the centre dash infotainment system and the other for the dials that you view through the sophisticated uh, three-spoke multifunction steering wheel. Now, these monitors are both seven inches in size as standard, but they can be upgraded as they have been here here to 10.25 inches in size if you pay extra. Now the central one is your main interface for the brand's new MBUX, Mercedes-Benz User Experience Multimedia System, which includes hard disk sat-nav and the brand's latest but sometimes rather frustrating Hey Mercedes voice control system. Aside from connectivity, the trimming is classy and although material quality isn't class leading, it's all put together in a way that really raises the bar for interiors in this segment. Time to take a seat in the back. A six-footer might still struggle a bit to sit behind another adult of similar height, but overall, there's significantly more room for knees and legs than there was before. And the boot, well, at 370 litres in size, it's 29 litres bigger than the trunk of the previous model. And thanks to the two-section rear lights, the loading aperture is 200 mils wider than before, and the luggage compartment floor is 115 millimetres longer. Fold down the seats completely, and uh, 1,210 litres of total capacity can be freed up. And in summary, well, you're probably aware that most German models require you to spend plenty if you're going to experience all they have to offer, and that's even more the case with this one. Without the fancy larger interior screens, this A-Class lacks a bit of its showroom uniqueness, and that's a selling point that's vital for this car to have in the face of renewed competition from BMW, Audi and Volvo in this segment. Even so, those who can afford the asking prices will find this hatch sporty, self-assured and possessed of a feel-good factor that really does make you feel special if you spec your chosen variant correctly, which is exactly what owning a car of this kind should be all about.